Good morning, afternoon, everybody. I'm Mike at Filmboy24. And think back. Uh, not, not at that, but think back. 2021. Maybe 2020, I don't really remember. But we did 10 Super 8 cameras, and we ran one roll of film through all 10 different cameras. The following year, which was about a year ago, we did the same thing, but with 15 cameras. And it came out, yeah, okay. Well, we're matching that once again. It's 2023, and we're not using just four cameras. We're using 20. Oof. <laughs> That was weird. 20 cameras, one roll of film. That's right, here shortly we are going to see what 20 cameras, now I know I keep showing you this, this is only four cameras because well I couldn't fit all 20 of them on my desk. So just pretend, envision this desk full of 20 cameras all stacked up everywhere. I'm going to go through what, uh, what the cameras were. Uh, well, you'll see it when you see the film. You'll see each individual camera. Before I get started, there's something I want to bring up really quickly. It's not going to take long. Every now and then, well, pretty regularly, <laughs> I get emails from people. Uh, and oftentimes, you see, I do a lot of processing and scanning outside of uh, YouTube here, outside of this world, for people. Thank you to YouTube for, uh, for allowing me to do that. But I do a ton of processing and scanning for people. Mainly it's when somebody finds an old roll of film in a deceased relative's attic or garage or a clean out or something. And they want to know what's on it. They'll send me a couple rolls. I've had as many as 50 rolls sent to me before. I do occasionally get a call for uh, movie makers or filmmakers films where they out, they're out and they're shooting their own little independent film or a short film or something, or just experimenting with a new camera or a new film stock, and they ask me to process and scan it for them, which I proudly do, proudly do. Well, one such human uh, is a guy named Jesse Pollock, and he contacted me quite a while ago. I want to say it was about a year ago. And he told me about a project that he and uh, his crew, his crew of people were working on, and it's an independent film independent feature film um, and it's shot documentary style so it's basically a a like a fictional documentary um, and it's titled the point pleasant tapes the point pleasant tapes now if you know anything about point pleasant that's in west virginia you'll know that in the 1960s there were the mothman sightings and we had some mothman movies uh, there's been a mainstream mothman movie um, this one's a little bit different. Uh, they're shooting everything in modern day on digital. And it's a, like I say, it's a found footage fictional documentary style. So the found footage has all been shot on, you guessed it, Super 8 and VHS. Now, for their VHS, they use an old Magnavox VHS uh, camcorder, you know, like the Beasts. Uh, and for their Super 8, they use none other than, I have reviewed it in the past, the Yashica Super 600 Electro. You guys remember that? I did a review on that. I'll put a link to it up there if you're curious about what it does. But he contacted me, uh, Jesse did. And by the way, it's directed by Jesse Pollock and Dan Jones. Uh, but Jesse contacted me and said, Mike, would you be interested in processing and scanning all of the film for us for this movie? Now, it wasn't just one or two rolls. They're doing a big film here. So, so of course, I jumped at it. And, and to say that this is, this is certainly not a sponsorship, there's no, you know, I, I was just proud to be part of it. Um, and, and they paid me, which is, I almost felt like I was stealing from them because I really enjoyed it. But it does take a lot of time. But they paid me to process all the film, scan all the film. I sent it all back to them, the, the digital files. Um, and that's what they're using in the movie for the Super 8 portion. So uh, it was equal to, I don't remember, about, I don't know, 15 or 20 rolls of film. And they used all kinds of different stocks. And we did a lot of black and white, a little bit of color. So, so I was super, super excited about that. So I got an email from Jesse just a week or two ago. And he was excited to announce that they're doing their big round of fundraising on Indiegogo to try to complete this project. So you can guess how excited I am about seeing this because I'm a horror film, but fanatic. I almost said buff, but buffnatic. So I was, I'm super excited to see where this goes. 
Um, very quick synopsis. It's about a, a group of three guys that in 1987, they take a road trip and they're heading to uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Well, I'm not going to get into all of it. You're going to have to check it out on your own, but they vanish. That's the nuts and bolts of it. And then 34, 34-ish years later, mysteriously, some videos were uploaded on YouTube of their trip, of their, of their, well, that's all I'm going to say. Three, uh, they were, they were deemed the Mothman Three or the Point Pleasant Three or something like that. Forgive me, Jesse, I'm, I can't remember what they were, but, but hopefully you guys are intrigued enough to go and look. There's a huge synopsis on the Indiegogo. I will leave a link to that Indiegogo right down there in the description. Um, and I'm also going to leave a link to their trailer and check it out because I, it's freaky. I actually watched it with my 14-year-old daughter and we really enjoyed it. Um, so I'm very excited to see what comes of that. But if you, if you care enough about, you know, supporting some of this low budget, actual film work, feature film stuff, do me a favor, do Jesse a favor, do Dan a favor, check out the link down below. If you don't want to contribute, I'm sure they are fine with that, but maybe share it, spread the word any way you can. That's all I'm going to say on that. I'm excited. Anyway, back to where we are right here. So I can't put all 20 cameras up here, but but if you remember, I did 10 cameras with one roll of Vision 350D a couple of years ago, about two years ago. I followed that up a year later with 15 cameras and one roll of Vision 3 200T. I'm a hand guy. Well, now we're following that up with 20 cameras. So 10, 15, 20. I don't know what's next. Stop. My wife will kill me. Um, 20 cameras, one roll of film. Well, I used Vision 3 on the first two, so this time around I decided to go with something a little different. I used an old roll, you guys know how much I love Plus X, but I used an old roll of Kodak Plus X 7276. It's a very slow speed film, I was doing everything outside. Settle down. Um, every camera that I used, and now there's 20 different cameras, they're different cameras, not necessarily different models. There are three cameras that are the same. I have three of these Canon 1014 XLS cameras, and I'm gonna tell you, they all perform a little bit different. So I wanted to use all three of them. I'm about knocked this over twice now. So I wanted to use all three of them, which I did, you'll see. Uh, and then I used the other 17 cameras were all completely different. I do have two 814 cameras, so uh, Canon 814s, One's the electronic, one's not. So they're a little bit different, not exact same model. So I'm so excited. I love doing experiments like this just to kind of just see not only how the film reacts in each camera in auto where applicable, but, but how each camera reacts to that type of film. Um, like I say, this is a slow speed film. Uh, for outdoors, I believe it is ASA or ISO 25. So it's very slow, but most of these old cameras can handle that just fine. They were designed for stuff like that. That particular roll of film, and I've got it right here, uh, had an edge code on it so we can tell exactly how old the film that I was using is. The edge code was a triangle and a plus. That means this roll of film was manufactured in 1970. Old. Old. Like over 50 years old. You guys remember the last plus X one I just did that was over 50 years old? Came out pretty good camera pretty good. What I also wanted to do, I had a partial roll of 100D, the 7294, that I wanted to sort of click off here and there. So there was a couple of cameras I really wanted to try this in or mess with this in. So I'll probably at the end of the Plus X, I'll throw in just a, just a minute or so of this that I, that I put together um, in just a couple of cameras just to sort of burn off the rest of this roll, which would be exciting. So here's how I'm going to do it. Just the same as I did the first two times. I'm going to show you the footage. And as we see each scene change, you'll see kind of slides in at the top. You'll see the name of the camera that shot that particular scene. Now, everyone is pretty brief. It's going to be, I don't know, in the five second range. Uh, the subject matter, I got my wife. She's usually pretty busy. Uh, she loves to read. And I have to tell you, it was about 93 degrees with about 70% humidity in the backyard when we shot this. 
Um, but she loves to read. She's read about 30 books so far this year. So she decided she would help me and she wanted to just sit in one of our Adirondack chairs in the backyard and read her book. And I would just film her. So I've never done one of these where I filmed a, a human being. It's always been objects. So it's just, it's going to be the same kind of similar scene over and over. It's just her reading a book. Um, at the very end, I had film left over in each cart. So I just jammed that film into my Canon 514 XL and then just did a little bit of random filming of her reading. So I might show that at the end as well. Not 100% sure how I'm going to do, what, you know, where I'm going to show what. Well, you guys know by now or you will in a second because I've already edited it. Here is the Plus X film along with, at the end, I'll put some of the 100D Ektachrome right now. Well, there you have it. And now you can see exactly which cameras I used, all 20 of them, for this fun little experiment. Some of them came out terrible, a little overexposed, a little underexposed, a little out of focus. Uh, overexposed especially with Kodakam 40. You guys remember my Shannon, uh, what was it, 132P XL or something like that. The 132 model. Uh, the exposure meter is stuck, so it, it overexposes everything. Kind of figured that was going to happen anyway. It's happened on my previous two multi-camera challenges. Um, I did process both of these rolls of film myself, right there in that 70s looking kitchen. Um, I used the three-step, the three-bath, you know, uh, first developer, color developer, and then Blix, you know, for the, for the E6, the Ektachrome 100D. And for the Plus X, I used my standard HC-110B for about five and a half minutes at about 67 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you know. You know the beauty of these two films? Neither one of them have Rimjet. That is a beautiful thing. Rimjet isn't a beautiful thing. That is beautiful. The fact there's no Rimjet. Anyway, okay, I know I'm doing a lot of rambling. 
Uh, if you have any questions about any of these cameras, a lot of them I have done individual reviews on. So click on, there's a playlist that's it's all about camera reviews or breakdowns. Click on that and you can probably find some of these, like this Bolex uh, 150 Super. I did a review on that. I've done a review on this little Yashica. And you guys know I love this little Canon 514XL. I've done a couple of reviews on that. Well, one main review and then uh, used it quite a bit. I hope you enjoyed this fun little demonstration of a whole bunch of cameras and one roll of film. If you did, there is a way that you can show me. I'm gonna show you how you can show me. Yeah, just, just, it's just air that I'm hitting, but if you would, hit the little, the little thumbs up button, the like button down at the bottom. It'll, it'll change colors. Maybe it turns blue now or something. I don't know, maybe it's black. I, But tap it, it's quick. And if you think, right there, look at that. Let me follow it all the way to the end. Ooh, I'm going to be dizzy because I'm just looking at nothing. If you think I've earned it, maybe you should subscribe. Or you could subscribe. If you don't want to subscribe, that's okay. I can't make you. See, I nothing. Uh, and until the very next time, you guys can settle down. That I see all of your beautiful faces. That, that mainly, mainly I'm talking to you. You know, you know what I'm talking about right there. Okay. Guess what? I was just getting ready to do it. And you know what happened? What usually happens? She's maybe bumped the light, but up out of nowhere appears. <laughs> Hello. What's going on up here? Oh. There's a lot of sort of, these, these are sewing machines. <laughs> you want to you wanna do, do the send out with me? Okay, wait a minute. You ready? We're going to do it. I'm going to let you do the send out, okay? Okay. And until the very next time that I see all of your beautiful faces. Faces. Do it. Here we go. On the very No, you got to do the thing first. <laughs> <laughs> we'll both see you on the very, very next, next go, go around. around.